Tim Panasic for Gibbons Motor Toys. Today we're standing in the 2425. So there's a few boats in our coastal series that uh, I want to explain the differences on. So using the 2425, I'm going to talk about the difference between the 2225, and then I'm also going to talk about our 2325, 2625, and 2825. It does bring some confusion to a lot of people, so I'll try to make it as easy as possible to understand the differences between them. The 2425 and the 2625 are essentially the same hulls. The reason that uh, for the difference in the name is how the boats are measured. The 2425 is actually well over 26 feet long from the back of the bracket to the bow of the boat. The 2625 is virtually the same length so the 2625 is measured that way. The 2425 for all intents and purposes is married from the back of the transom, not including the engine bracket. So there's the difference with the 2425 and the 2225 is that they're measured from the transom to the bow. The 23, the 26 and the 28, because they're a pilot house design, they are measured from the engine bracket forward. So at the end of the day, the 2425, 2625, virtually the same hull. The difference between the 2425 and the 2225 is essentially the two feet of difference in length. As well, the 2425 is an eight and a half foot beam. The 2225 and 2325 are on an eight foot beam. The primary difference between the 2225, 2425 versus the 23, 26 and 28 is gonna be the rear sloping windshield that you see on this 2425 and the 2225 will have the same. The 23, the 26, and the 28 will have a forward sloping pilot house configuration similar to our offshore boats that you see back here. So that's the primary difference is going to be the, sloping, the slope of the windshield, forward or backward, and we'll talk about that more, one, more once we get in the boat. As far as uh, engine size that we put on our boats, typically we're going to put anywhere between 200 horsepower to 300 horsepower on any of these boats, including the 23 right on up to the 28. We will do twins as well. Uh, and that's another discussion, but just to give you an idea, yes, twin 115s can go on the 23 and 22. Uh, twin 150s can go on this boat, the 26, the 28. The 28 can actually go as high as twin 200s. So singles or twins, uh, really the customer's choice, and we'll leave that discussion for another time. As far as uh, some more specs on the boats, uh, pretty much all of these boats have 125 sides. They come standard with a 3 16 bottom with an optional quarter inch bottom, which is the way that we usually spec most of our boats. Another option on every one of these boats that we're talking about is the uh, uh, heavy duty rub rail. So this is an option that uh, can be added to any one of the series of the coastal boats that we've just talked about. The other thing that's an option on this is you got the optional bow buddy in the front to protect the boat for towing. A nice feature that uh, Kingfisher does that we're really proud of, it works awesome, is our walkthrough transom. So the way that this works, as you can see in this position, it looks like it's got a full size transom or a full height transom. All you do is there's a latch here that you clip back. This folds down. We'll show you this from the inside as well, but what this does is it gives you a step, a two-step system, and then there you are back on the engine bracket. Really, really easy to get in and out of the boat, whether it's on the trailer or you're getting on and off a dock. It's just really, really easy access. No safety is compromised, works very slick. Starting with the stern of the boat, what we have here is we have a large uh, fish tank. This is aerated. It's an option to aerate it. The reason that a lot of people want to do that is primarily for crab. Works awesome. This also doubles as a cutting board. This has got an optional transom rail on it. We've mounted some Burnwin rod holders on here. You can put a barbecue on here, you could put knives in there, you could put rod holders on there, whatever you like. Uh, while we're talking about that, we'll maybe just uh, point that out. This has got, you know, downriggers here. We got rod holders there. These Burnwin mounts work so nice. You just flip the lever, out it comes. 
very, very heavy duty, very robust. We'll talk about Burnwin in a separate uh, video. As far as kicker engines are concerned, most of the boats that are larger are getting the 15 horse, although Mercury's 9.9 .9 is now an EFI outboard as well, so either one is going to work fine. We only use really the best materials that we can. All the, our brackets, tie bars, all stainless steel, good stainless steel, designed for the saltwater environment. As far as our battery compartment and electrical compartment is concerned, this has got dual batteries. You can actually put triple batteries in here if you want. We have our main battery here. We have a house battery here. If you want to put two six volt batteries, we can do that. This has a BEP battery switch system, which is an option. You've got your billage pump. You got your pump for your live well, etc. So fuel filters, basically all the electrical wiring. And you can see how neat and tidy everything is back here. Easy to get at your macerator pumps, etc. Everything's very accessible and easy to get at. A unique uh, feature to Kingfisher is called their easy clean floor. Essentially what this means is it offers you all the features that you would get with a typical self baling deck, other than it's not self baling, it still uses pumps to remove the, the water, moisture from the boat. But the nice part about this is, is that you still have two good sized fish boxes here. Anything that lands in this boat, none of the debris is gonna end up in your billage. So everything is going to end up running to the sides of the floor here. And then on each corner, what we have is we have our easy clean pump outs. So these are macerator pumps, easily accessible if you need to service them. They've got floats in here. So as soon as the water level gets to a certain height, they automatically turn on and they're going to bilge the water out of the boat. You can also override those manually. There are switches on the uh, aft council. And then for winterizing, there's a very simple procedure where we just switch plugs around. So in the wintertime when the boat's sitting, you have your drain plug out of the boat and the floor will just empty into the bilge at that point and drain out. Some other features back here are having this guard. So if you're cleaning fish, you've still got areas here where your blood and debris can run overboard but your fillets are going to stay here where you want them. We've also got these trays back here. If you're putting your lures up here, pliers, when you're dealing with fish, that's very handy. You've got a good sized drawer right here. This does have drain holes in it if you do get water in there. So that's just handy for the stuff that you're using during the day. This has got a high pressure wash down pump. The other thing that's really nice is these double trays. And what's really nice is these lips that are put on here. There's definitely some, uh, some cost to doing this, but then there's two things for this. Number one is they're totally comfortable. You can lean against them. There's no sharp edges and the strength. You can jump on this and it's going to be very, very strong because that rolled lip adds a, a, a pile of extra, extra strength to it. This also has the bolster pad, so it's just more comfortable. Uh, when you're leaning against them and the toe kicks on this work really well. If you're fighting a good sized fish and you're in rough water, you got your feet in here, you can lean against here. Notice I'm pretty much vertical. That way there, my feet ain't slipping out from underneath me and it's just a much safer experience for landing a large fish. Okay, so this is our aft council. So basically what you're going to have here in a lot of cases, people will put a sonar there, which would be an option. We've uh, upgraded the steering wheels on this to the uh, stainless steel wheels with the uh, suicide knob. It just makes it nicer for control, especially at low speeds. Uh, this has got a storage compartment in here. In this particular boat, this has got an optional Wallace heater that we put in. So there's your fuel tank for the heater, plus extra storage space. There's two cup holders here. You got hand holds here, here, there. This has got the optional extended roof. Typically that roof would only be about this far. So this is an extra extended roof. Most of our boats go out with that. These are optional rod holders. There's eight of them up there as well. Again, easy to access. As far as access into the cabin, this door works pretty slick. It's a, it's a well-built door. And what's nice is if you look at this latch, that works really slick. And that door is there and it's solid and it's not gonna rattle, which is nice. Okay, moving into the cabin, lots of features in here to talk about. 
So first of all, we've got 42, two 42 inch bench seats here, and there's actually two cup holders. Don't know if you can see them there on each bench seat in the back of them. These are humongous storage. Look how deep they are. This has got a barbecue kit sitting in there. Now, this side here also has a head, and this is a real head. It's a full flush, it's got a holding tank. You got the option of uh, emptying the head into a storage tank or emptying overboard. So these rear bench seats also convert into a bed. The backrests lift off. There's another filler cushion that's actually sitting here below me. Again, there's tons of storage behind here. And basically there's three bars that go in here. This becomes a bed. The other thing, those storage trays we showed you in the back, they continue to run all the way forward right up to here. And then forward of that is again, more storage where you can put things in here and you're not gonna lose it because it's all sealed. As far as the glove box, nice large glove box there. This has an optional fusion stereo that we've installed. This has also got a Wallace Spartan 4.5 kilowatt heater in it. Uh, that has a vent here for the windshield, has one on the driver's side in front, as well as one on the floor. The heater, in this particular application, we've mounted the heater right up here and you really can't even see it. So all your storage up here, and this is all dry storage underneath the drop bow, which we'll show you after, but that's all clean, dry storage up there. There's also storage underneath the uh, driver's dash here. And we've also got floor storage here as well, which is deep. So these are Rivermaster seats. Nice part about these is they got the flip up armrests and these are uh, sitting on our shock wave suspension pedestals. These are the best in the industry. You can actually fine tune them for customer's weight. You can control them by the air pressure you put in them and you can adjust them to fine tune your needs. They're gonna give you the best ride that you can get on rough water. You can see that our dash will uh, fit a 12 inch screen which is very nice and clean. So here we got a 12 inch screen. We've got a five inch mercury vessel view in here. We've got our controls there. We got our trim tabs there. We've got a VHF radio right here. We got a CO2 detector for the heater over there. And even little things like this, you can put you know, items in here. They're not gonna roll off. You're not gonna lose them. You got space on the dash to add more stuff to throw your phone, binoculars, whatever it may be. And that applies for both sides. There's also storage on the sides up here, and this is all finished. So this uh, finishing material indeed goes into these trays. So everything in here is gonna keep quiet so it doesn't rattle as much. Rod holders. So we've got interior rod holders here for four rods. And then as far as the head that we showed you, there's also a privacy curtain here that closes around here so that uh, you get privacy where you need it. The lining in the interior of this cabin is an option. It's our optional all weather package. So as you can see, this is a very nice material. It's, uh, it's just a warm, comfortable feeling. Okay, easy access to the drop bow, a large windshield. And up here, again, it's a real, Fairly deep, large, safe place to be. If you're on rough water, you're still gonna feel safe and secure in here. There are optional rails that we could put on here. We even actually have an offshore rail which goes approximately this high. Uh, in this particular boat, we have this anchor on here. The nice part about this, you can see there's a, a slot here so you can close the lid and not have to uh, fight with uh, how that closes with your road in there. This will also hold up to 350 feet of road. So the roof on this boat has a few options. First of all, we've got an external antenna. We do that with all our hardtop boats. It just ensures a better signal since we have our sonar flush mounted in an aluminum dash. This has got optional roof rails on it along with the uh, side cargo rails. These are fully adjustable to accommodate whatever you may want. We also have optional uh, uh, storage baskets that go on here. You can see we've got the VHF antenna mounted to the rail so that we're not drilling ex any extra holes. 
And we've also got these tie down points that are welded on the roof. Makes really good uh, anchoring so that you're not uh, tie strapping to the rails, you're actually tie strapping to the roof of the boat. Another real important feature that Kingfisher does is our drip tray management. So basically this is an eaves trough. All the water on the roof is gonna be gathered in this eaves trough. If you got your side window open, that water is not running down and into the cabin. This is gonna to run to the aft of the boat. And what's really cool is that with our extended cabin, what happens here is this actually runs to the low point, which is right where my fingers are. So all that water from there and from here runs here. So that means that any water is gonna run down the cabin right here and then overboard. So hopefully this video has helped you understand the difference between our 2225, 2425 Escape and our uh, 2325, 2625 and 2825. In thinking about these boats, you know, it, it's really difficult to say that one particular boat is better in one application than another. Normally it would be a belief that the uh, 23, 26 and 28 pilot house configuration would be more suited for the salt water environment where you're pulling up to docks, not necessarily beaching as much. But then I had a customer correct me a couple of years ago that said, listen, this boat's better for me in the salt water because I spend a lot of time standing in my boat jigging for hell a bit. So on that note, both boats will work in both applications. You just need to be aware that the 22 and 24 are gonna be better if you're going to a beach as an example and you wanna get off the front end of the boat. You can do it with the 23, 26 and 28, but you're gonna be walking around the cabin because you don't have a windshield that opens up and you're gonna be walking on top, not in a drop bow. The compromise is gonna be is that the, uh, you're gonna have less storage under here. Now you've seen the storage, it's still fairly large, but in the pilot house design, you can literally sleep, sleep a small person underneath there and the storage is that much larger. So there's your give and take for each of those, as well as inside the cockpit, there is more headroom with the forward sloping windshield than the rear sloping windshield. But again, as you can see when we were standing in there, there's plenty of room in here with the windshield at this position as well. So those are the things that you need to think about when comparing the boats. As always, uh, remember to like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel and uh, please let us know if there's any particular videos that you're looking for in the future.